when I talk about increase in complexity, uh, you know, this relates to kind of the genetic, environmental, and epigenetic research in the sense that the last 25 years have shown huge advances in our understanding of gene influences on mental health disorders, the way that certain environmental factors might exert large effect sizes on the presentation of symptoms over time, and even in the, the term epigenetics, the way that the environment could actually change our gene expression over time, depending on what stressors we're facing or what protective factors we're facing. And what this means is that things we might earlier have thought of as perhaps more simple, like hoping to find a single cluster of genes that, you know, determines ADHD. In fact, we find that there's not a single cluster of genes. There's in fact many, many genes that could play a role in defining risk for ADHD, and that those genes are also shared with many, perhaps other mental health conditions. And what this also brings up for us is this kind of increasing complexity makes our heads spin that says, well, maybe what we have behaviorally, as reliable as it is, and even as we don't want to abandon it, isn't necessarily cleaving mental health the joints, that there might be reason to go back to all of our data and say, let's really approach this from square one in trying to define what kinds of genetic and environmental influences lead to different kinds of biological effects, understanding that ADHD may be a diagnostic term that either evolves over time or is better explained by multiple different subsets over time as we get more exact with our science.